Welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax referral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy. Using a proven tax referral strategy, such as a deferred sales trust, is the best way for you to sell highly appreciated assets. All tax deferreds you can create and preserve more wealth. Hey, I'm your host, Brett Swartz. Each episode, I'm joined by some of the best real estate, financial, and wealth minds in the world, where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspiration. So together, we can make complex tax referral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. We're also streaming on expertcresecrets.com as well. I'm excited about our next two guests. They're out of the great state of New Jersey. Uh, Michael Sirocco and Zach Zinda. They're on a mission to help people um, have total financial analysis on all of what they're doing to build their wealth, including retirement analysis and including estate strategies, including employment benefit and retention services, business continuation strategies, trust services, life insurance, and so much more. Please uh, welcome to the show with me, uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Zorocco and Zach Zinda. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks so much for having us, Brett. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll. Uh, I'm excited to have you guys as well. And how about we start with uh, with Mike, and then we'll go Zach. Uh, a little bit more about your story and your current focus. Sure. Yeah. Been in the business here, financial planning since 2013. Zach and I partnered up pretty much six months to a year into the, the business. Two young guys didn't really know too, too much about where we were, where we were going. Just said, hey, we want to work hard and, and help a lot of people. And eight, nine years later, here we are with a team, a staff and, you know, managing assets, helping people every day. So born and raised in New Jersey and yeah, love, love the business and everything about it. Awesome. How about you, Zach? Yeah. Um, so similar to Mike, started in the business uh, in 2012 and uh, Mike and I started working together pretty quickly. Um, you know, fast forward almost a decade later, working together and, um, you know, grown to probably well over 600 households and clients, um, over $100 million in assets um, and, and really looking forward to the next 10 years or so of a lot of the, the change that we're going to be seeing uh, across the board in this country. You know, we're already seeing it so quickly, but, um, you know, like Mike, born and raised in New Jersey, uh, we're both college athletes. So that um, similar backgrounds, totally different sports, but similar backgrounds in our work ethic and drive and, you know, what motivates us definitely um, brought us together and continues to, to help us exceed and grow and, and build the business, you know, well after our our athletic careers have, have long passed us. So excited to be here today and looking forward to chatting with you, Brett. Awesome. Thanks so much for that background. That's really cool. Um, so let's dive right into the number one secret to building different facets of wealth management. So what would you say that is? What's, what, what, what's the number one secret to creating different, different facets to make sure that you're financially strong and stable? Yeah. I'm going to start. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think the, I think the first, the first thing that you need to know is you need to have a plan. Um, I think so many people, especially in today's, um, you know, stock market with, what we call the meme stocks, the gamification of the stock market. You've got Robin hood, you've got cryptocurrencies. Everybody right now is just trying to get rich quick. And I think there's a lot of people that have gotten rich quick, but majority of the people in this country are not getting rich quick by, you know, hitting a couple nice trades in the market. So I think the, the first and foremost is, is having a game plan and understanding that it is a long-term plan and it's not just a six month or 12 month, you know, turn your, you know, $500,000 into 5 million. Um, it's just really not the the reality for most people. So, Zach, anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I think he hit on the head. And then, you know, with the game plan comes a financial coach, right? Whether it's a coach, an accountability partner, someone like us that's licensed and in the business, someone like yourself, you know, we, we know your background, someone that could be your spouse, right? Or your parents, aunts, uncles, somebody that at times that you might not want to think about your money, the markets, taxes, et cetera, you have somebody that can keep you accountable and, and just say, hey, are, are you in track with your goals and are your goals in line with your money and, and these types of things? Very cool. So like partnership, I'm really curious for you guys, right? I imagine you guys have complementing um, gifts, right? And strengths, right? Maybe different personality types, maybe the same. I don't know. I met you guys, you know, uh, five minutes ago, but yeah. what, what, Talk to us about the partnership. Why why partner and how do you guys' gifts and talents complement one another? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll start. We, again, started seven, eight years ago. Zach had been in the business and kind of as two young guys saying, 
most of our friends and people in our natural markets didn't have a whole heck of a lot of money. So we had to level up and, and just go out and try to help a lot of people. And we said, it's a lonely, lonely business by yourself, right? We've done everything from networking events, business card exchanges, cold calls, marketing, branding, and, you know, to do that yourself on some of those early mornings, late nights can be challenging. So we were kind of like Zach had said, both college athletes came up and said, if we're going to go at this thing and survive, you know, very small success rate in the financial uh, advising, financial planning business, let's go at it together. And actually the other thing that brought us together was sharing staff. In the beginning, they're like, oh, you got to hire an assistant. You got to hire a staff. You can't be wasting your time doing paperwork and, you know, service, service uh, items. So we said, well, I, I can't really afford my own staff full time. He can't really afford it. So we came together, split. Um, and since then, you know, we have some more staff and other team members, but it was kind of, we always say it every day as a joke. We say, how did we do it? Like, how do we survive? How do we have all these clients and assets and getting referred, et cetera? So it's, it's been a long journey, but, you know, sometimes our clients and we think we've been in the business for 30 years. I'm like, man, we're only been in eight, nine years. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah Very I, cool. Anything out of that, Mike? Go ahead. Or Zach? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, to part of your question is, you know, what differences do we have? I think Mike and I are very similar, yet we're very different at the same time. And um, Mike's strengths are the organization behind the business and making sure that everything is run as smoothly as possible with, with our clients and, and how important it is from, you know, point A to point B with, with bringing on new clients and having all the systems and processes. And, and then also, you know, Mike's personality with clients and getting referred and similar to me is coming up with these ideas and marketing and, and going out there and continue to build our brand and bringing that all together has allowed us to continue to go into this hyper growth mode, which we're, we're looking forward to over the next decade or so from here now, because again, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. Mike, you know, you just said, I feel like we've been doing this for 30 years. It's only been just under 10 years. And I think the next 10 years from now for us are just such a, uh, you know, a big run up here for the next 10 years to continue to grow. I think I listened to one of your podcasts and you're talking about the, you know, the big uh, wealth transfer from the baby boomer generation that's coming. And we're starting to see that come now. Uh, we've already had experiences with that, with some of our, um, our bigger clients now having some uh, massive wealth transfers, and that's only going to continue to happen. And I think we're positioned ourselves in such a great spot now to be able to, um, you know, help help this transition of wealth in our country, which we've never seen before. So, cool, very well said, Mike and Zach. Thank you so much. By the way, you can learn more about Mike Sor uh, Soroko and Zach Zinda. You guys have some really cool last names, by the way. <laughs> and at emeritusweltgroup.com. That's still with an E, by the way. E M. E-R-I-T-U-S, wealthgroup.com, emeritusweltgroup.com. Okay, excellent. So what services do you guys offer, just so I understand? So you guys are doing, you guys are financial advisors, insurance professionals, a mix. Can you kind of just break down what is it What is it that uh, you guys offer your clients? Yep, absolutely. It's a, a wide range. I would say when we first started, we really only were in the insurance side of the business. Then we grew more wealth management, financial advising, um, retirement planning, education planning. We do a lot of work in our markets with student loans and, and debt. Um, we do a lot of work on the business owner side as well. So group benefits, qualified retirement plans, different custom plans, uh, employee retention strategies. Again, we work with a lot of CPAs and I would say centers of influence and partners to help, again, put the best resources around a client. But at the end of the day, it's really just building relationships and helping people uh, with wherever they are today, where they want to get to in the future, and how can we help them understand things on a baseline level financially to get there a little bit quicker and maybe a little bit more efficiently than they can do on their own. Cool. So now let's talk about real estate versus, uh, you know, maybe traditional, more traditional liquid securities investments. I'm curious if you guys invest in real estate yourselves. That's my background where most of my clients and the, and the people that I serve come, come from, you know, entrepreneurial business uh, real estate, uh, mostly where they've made the majority of their wealth. So I'm curious on your guys' clients, same, different, or, or what's kind of the, the nuance there to help people who are moving from real estate and wanting to maybe be a little more passive and work with you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, Mike and I, um, you know, both, both have, uh, have real estate that we currently own and, uh, our client base, uh, does, there's a good portion that do invest in real estate. It's it's not a ton to be honest. Um, <clears throat> so we're we're not as heavily based in the in, in the real estate market as you are with you and your clients there. But um, 
uh, I certainly think that more and more people are looking for alternative assets, especially the ones that we're working with, is they want to have other income coming from real estate income. They don't want to just have all their money sitting in the stock market or all their money in the bank, obviously earning them you know, minimal, minimal interest at this point. Um, but it's a little bit of, of both with our clientele. Yeah, no, I you hit it on the head. I think, again, it's not the predominant thing that, that we work with, but we both own residents. I just bought a rental property um, up in Vermont. We joke living in New Jersey, the, uh, you know, I'm like, man, we have these clients now through the pandemic and Zoom and clients throughout the country. We keep getting licensed and they'll go, oh, how much money are you making? Where are you saving money? And tell me about your properties and invest. Oh, I own this property. It's 6,000 square feet for 300 grand. And I'm like, man, you know, that property in New Jersey is going to cost you 1.7 million. But um, again, it's all relative. I think we're really, we are big fans of real estate as one specific asset class, right? I think kind of the old cliche, don't put all your eggs in one basket. We meet people that say crypto is the only way or, you know, stocks are the only way or mutual funds or index funds or real estate. I think if you get too over leveraged in any one area, it's not going to do you too well. So again, it's about having balance and we try to add that into each client's specific plan. Absolutely love it. Yeah, the diversification, liquidity, and the ability to have time to go in and out of real estate. That's that's what we focused on. And in the meantime, you'd be able to go in the stock market, right? And buy some insurance and do that all tax deferred, um, which is going to lead to our next segment, which is um, the biggest frustration for yourself, clients, friends, family, when it goes to selling highly appreciated assets, be it cryptocurrency, real estate, a primary home, uh, a business um, and having to face huge capital gains taxes, right? Um, you're in Jersey. I know New York, California, were some of the highest in the in the in the uh, in the union here. Um, it could be 30 to 50 percent of capital gains tax and depreciation recapture that's going to be uh, paid to the government if, unless you have some kind of deferral plan. So I'm curious, guys, what's the biggest frustration that you've seen with capital gains tax deferral options and/or the 1031 exchange? Yeah, I think. Uh and big fans of the show also and knowing that we were coming on here we've been listening to a bunch of your shows you know leading up to this and we're getting takeaways so this is great we're going to share some of these things with with our clients on things that we're not experts in everything you know real estate obviously but i think the biggest frustration is number one people aren't educated right and they say oh i can just go on google and get the answer or you know do this or that or my you know, zach always jokes he was like, having a conversation with his mailman and he's like, when my mailman's starting to tell me about like capital gains and stock trades, you know that there's just a different, you know, shift in, <laughs> in the investment universe. Um, I think a big frustration when it comes to our specific world is that most people are just putting all of their dollars in these qualified retirement accounts. And, oh, I put my money in my 401k or, you know, even if we put uh, an example for a business owner of ours, oh, I'm going to put in my SEP at 56, I'm going to max out a 401k deferred comp, even if you put away a hundred to $250,000, we always say, do you think taxes in the next 20, 30 years are going to be higher or lower? And most people would agree they're probably going to be higher. If that's the case, you know, do you want to be say, saying, Hey, I'm going to pay all that tax in the future as great as tax deferral is. Um, again, I think that's one and the other one in, in the Robin hood world that we work in and, and kind of deal with and see people now investing. People have made a lot of money very quickly. If we just go in the past 18 months from, you know, April 1st, if you started investing through the pandemic until now, people thought the stock market could only go up <laughs> and we kind of laugh. Like, obviously that's not the case. And again, it's a lot of younger people, which we love that more and more people are into investing. But when yeah. you think about, Hey, you've got a two, three, 400, we have clients with $500,000 unrealized gains. And, you know, what are they doing to maybe realize they don't realize you're paying federal state income, net investment tax, all these things. And like you said, 30 to 50 percent is wiped out. You're like, oh, don't. I mean, unfortunately for a lot of our clients, especially those with highly appreciated stocks or RSUs or or just different portfolios. I mean, we're not doing as much in the, in the 1031 exchange and, and things like that nature. But, you know, people aren't realizing, especially those that have incomes north of 500,000, you know, 750 a million dollars plus. You know, they're in New Jersey basically paying close to 50 percent in taxes on that money. So they're all happy. Hey, we just sold a million dollars or two million dollars worth of stock. But they're not realizing that they're only going to get 48 to 50 percent of that of that money right now. And and unfortunately, I, I don't know where we're going. You know, there's obviously not here to talk politics, but it could be getting worse from here. So that's another scary thing that that we're starting to see for a lot of our clients, which is, you know, like Mike said, we were learning some interesting stuff from what you were talking on your podcast 
definitely want to kind of start to talk about what other options are out there for, for these clients so that they're just not losing 50, 60% right off the bat, you know, when they're, when they're selling these highly appreciated assets. Yeah, hundred percent. Could agree with you guys more. And it's no longer about cash flow. It's now about tax flow, right? So, I mean, you got to have cash flow. That's important. But for a lot of the clients that we serve, they've made their wealth, they've built their businesses and they're ready to exit and they're ready to exit rich and they're ready to exit uh, in a smart way. And a lot of them will not exit if they don't have a clear plan to defer the capital gains tax. And so, yeah, back to part of your point you were saying earlier, yeah, the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet is happening right now. And this is according to the American Bankers Association is about 17 to 20 trillion dollars that'll pass from the baby boomers to the millennials in the next 20 years. And it's known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. It's never happened before. There's 10,000 baby boomers between 65 every day. And there's over 77 million in the U.S. alone. That's the first storm is the demographic storm. Second storm is the political storm. And you touched a little bit on that. But Biden is considering moving from 20 to 40 percent on the capital gains tax federal rate. Also eliminating or limiting the 1031 exchange. And the biggest thing is eliminating potentially yeah. the stepped up basis. Right. Yeah, so essentially yeah. transferring the majority of the wealth from the baby boomers in the next 20 years. Should those things pass and also not have someone else come back in and, and, and reverse them. There's never been more transfer from a from from a single, let's say, um, citizen to a government that we know of in the history of the planet. So right. it's a battle for for tax flow, not just cash flow. And this is why we offer the deferred sales trust. So if you are selling a highly appreciated asset, you can defer the tax, right? And and you can live off the cash flow and slowly pay some income tax on that, but keep the golden goose, the main principle, in place. And, and just continue to pass that on to your kids and keep it going for you, which is great. You can also delay the income tax. So you can delay for a couple of years and that can also help you if you're, if you're moving out of New Jersey and establishing residency in Florida where it has you know, zero income tax or in Nevada or different states that are more favorable. So it can defer capital gains tax. It can also help you delay income tax. Um, and then it can also move funds outside of your taxable estate, which is another big thing that most people um, may not be paying as much attention to, but that's going to be able to save 40%. Um, so, so much there. You can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to learn more. It's capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. Guys, that being said, we are running out of time. Are you ready for the lightning round? Yep, let's do it. All right. Knowing what you know now, we'll start with Mike again. If you go back to your 20 to 25-year-old self, what's the one golden nugget you'd make sure to tell yourself to do? Related to this business, it would have been hire more people, more staff, and Pay them more money and hire them at a quicker rate. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. How about you, Zach? Yep, absolutely. Uh, I think number one thing I would do is just reinvest more money back into the company and, and continue to understand of what that ROI is on just more and more dollars going back in versus, you know, again, 25, putting it back into lifestyle as you start to make a little bit of money. So, Excellent. Invest in yourself, invest in the business, build systems, build people. I love it. Yep. Uh, second question, the number one book you recommend it or gifted the most in the past year, Mike? Yep, uh, shifted a lot more to audio books with the drive in life, but I would say Think and Grow Rich. I love the fundamentals and all the things. It's crazy to me still how many of our clients or friends have heard of it, but still don't, you know, haven't read it so easy. So we, we use that a lot. Excellent. Go ahead, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, read this on the beach early on in the year in vacation, but uh, 10X by Grant Cardone. Um, not a huge Grant Cardone guy, but uh, I think there's little things that you could take from him. And uh, I thought the book was just was just awesome. And I probably had about maybe five or seven people in the last couple of months here read it and say the same thing. Just some great takeaways from the book. So beautiful, love it, cool. Um, next question: What are you most curious about, Mike? Go. Most curious about. Honestly, where our team is going to be in the next five to 10 years, where, again, we started just with each other. And now as we hire more staff, we had a former colleague literally call us right before the podcast. Hey, I want to come back. Are you guys hiring more advisors? And we said, uh, at this point, we kind of want more staff to help us build and support the, the foundation. So I, every day things change. But I think where we're going to be as a team in, in five to 10 years is the thing that I just stay up and think about. Sure. Uh, I, I would say most curious about is, is what is – you know, what does the country look like, you know, from a, a workforce and just life in general post COVID and whatever that means, right? Is that 12 months, six months, two years? What does life look like? I don't think it'll ever, ever be the same, you know, for, for better or worse in different ways, but 
very curious to see how we move on and you know how we continue to grow post post COVID. Oh, can't hear you. I think we lost you. Yeah, maybe on mute. <laughs> we, I don't know if he's talking about I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> 